sorrow, joy, love. A song has the capability to express what humans feel but can't find words to say. Music carries emotions, memories that can stay with us long after an experience ends. Artist and producer LT Mo knows what it means to create music that invokes the human condition. On this episode of Heart to Heart, this California-based artist talks about crafting music. He also shares how it feels to make music as a black man in America. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Heart to Heart. Today I have the amazing opportunity to talk to a good brother, LT Mo. Thank you so much for being all with me, brother. How you doing today? Ah, oh, man, I'm good. Thanks for having me, man. Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely glad to have you on today. It's uh, it's one of those things where we get to talk to uh, brothers, get to sit down and actually have conversations, especially when it comes to what we love to do. For you, it's music. So how did you get into the music business in the first place? Um, I want to say I got into music in general pretty much like right after I graduated high school. That's like when mm. I But in terms of the business, um. I got into the business uh, down in Atlanta, actually. I left Cleveland and went to Atlanta, and I linked up with who ended up being my manager, and now is like my big brother. Uh, my, uh, guy, my guy Zeke, um, he pretty much ushered me right in, man. He uh, <laughs> he took me up through there, man. He, he <laughs> showed you the ropes. You know, so he took he took me to um he took me to the next level from where I was mm. at which was ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that brother. So you, you, what's, what's your main focus in music right now? I know you're doing producing. What, uh, what, what things all are in your wheelhouse? Um, right now, man, I'm focusing on working. I want to, I want to break an artist. That's my main goal. Um, as mm. far as what I have worked, have what I'm working on right now, I have a few artists, that I'm working on that's in development and whatnot, um, and a few projects as well. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, other than that, musically, working on a couple cartoons that I'm actually mm -hmm. I'm writing and doing the illustration for as well because oh wow, art was my first love before I got into music or whatnot. So wow, so art, music, any other hidden talents that we didn't know about? <laughs> um, you know what, man, I would. Honestly, I would classify it as creativity, to be honest with you, man. It's mm. just that I was blessed with creativity. Now, I figured out later on in life that I could, you know, use that creativity however I choose. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's music, whether it's art and illustration, whether it's writing, you know, um, whether it's trying to figure out how to bob and weave through this traffic, you know, I apply my creativity to, <laughs> to, any, to life in general. Yes, I get that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm the same way when it comes to, you know, video editing or writing or speaking. I feel like it's all creative work and I definitely have to tap into some of the same resources and sources in order to do that. So I, I definitely agree with you. What, what for you, though, draws your motivation to do the music and do all the uh, activate the creativity that you have? Um, Different things, man. You just never know what it's going to be. I mean, it could be anything from the click up a fork against the bowl might hit mm. us might just oh my god come up with this whole orchestration production of a you know you know <laughs> go in and start making this beat based off this little team that you heard wow um, you know it could be from a conversation talking about something but no, one thing that drives me in particular are words and i don't mean lyrics i mean like just words literally like yeah. a word will send me off into a tangent like one word, it'll, it'll, it'll spark something crazy and I'll be gone for like a week. I'll disappear for a week. Really? <laughs> or just building and creating, yeah. Word or what's, what's the last word that you had? Um, villain. Mm. How did that, how did that uh, take you? Where did that take you? Um, well, it started off as a record. Then it turned into a comic book and mm. writing a movie. So it just, you know, it, it just kept progressing. It kept like, it kept blooming. It wow. kept, you know, whatever. So 
yeah it, it literally it started out as a record then i found myself on an ipad doing an illustration of a comic book cover and then um after going so far with that i'm like well this could be a movie <laughs> say why not yeah you know what i'm saying so yeah that's 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 the latest one the wow latest. that's that's so, really big i appreciate it man yeah um we're gonna see where it goes hey day by day i love it uh for you you're somebody who uh does a lot of things and when you moved from atlanta to la what was the main motivation or uh, southern california what was the main motivation for that um to be honest i took a trip out here i had been out here working like i was out here on and off working doing music from 03 to roughly 06. Mm. um that didn't do it so i took a trip out here in march of 2015 with a uh producer buddy of mine came out here to do some work with him i got bink the humble monster and um mm. We was out here for about a week and um that was my first time actually getting to experience the city really getting to experience la because back in oh between oh three and oh six we were literally from the hotel or whatever apartment they had us in to the studio like there was no really moving around and seeing the city yeah. and this and that so when i came out here in 2015 and I experienced the city after that week. I didn't want to go back to Atlanta, to be honest with you. Well, so, let's stay here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I um, I made my mind up then before I even got on the plane to come back to Atlanta. I said, oh, I'm moving to Cali. So when I got home, I uh, told my girl, I said, man, we're moving to Cali. Um, After she got done laughing at me and saying... <laughs> And all this stuff um it was so crazy because i told it now mind you it was march 2015. i yeah. told about august of 2017 we out and it just so happened it all happened a month early whoa by july 2017 the tip top of july 2017 we was out so you 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 manifested that thing you definitely spoke that into existence and made that thing happen oh yeah it's real was she uh was she excited to move to scared <laughs> i can imagine what what was her biggest fear i don't have anybody there i don't have anybody i'm like ah oh, man you, i don't have time for that i'm i'm you know i'm the type of guy i go anywhere i don't care where opportunities at whether i know somebody or not i don't care i'm going i've always yeah, been that, so. yeah. But you had but you had good connections there and those were things that you uh connections that you had that were deep for you what what support do you have there and how is that support important for your success um the support i have here i mean i, I know i know some people here or whatever but honestly man i'm um i'm self-driven i mean you know the opportunities they come um you know i take advantage of them the best way i can and that's yeah. that i really don't have a um outside of my, my 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 bro zeke you know he's here or whatever um outside of that man i'm not gonna really say i have a support system or a team like yeah. that not out here i do have a support system i'm not gonna say they're necessarily here you know i'm, I'm just out here man i'm i'm moving around and you know really the inspiration was the energy the energy was so dope when i was out here uh 2015 i was like man i have to live in that I have to wake up to that you know i definitely understand that yes yeah. hey, man. <laughs> i love it well you know so much has happened with music recently um you have some songs like uh, you know little nas x new song uh you have just the, the industry changing so much uh in general what do you feel like is happening in the current state of the music industry uh, what's happening in the current state of the music industry is like a lot of other industry. It's been microwaved. Mm. Micro um, due to technology. I mean, that, that, that it's as simple as that. Um, it's like technology has enabled 
anybody to literally be able to roll out of bed and become i don't know what they would claim to be a musician today like or yeah or whatever like technology has allowed that you know you got it to where in terms of production and you know anything they can they can do it there's no <laughs> the access, absolutely right about that you know it's, it's not the same when i first got in when i first got in you know you had to have a little bread to have a studio set up it wasn't as simple as you know having a computer actually when i first got in computers really weren't relevant in the in the music space yet they were on their way yeah but they they weren't nowhere near you know what we have today um cats were still using two inch reels and adap machines right in the game you did what i'm saying so it yeah. wasn't, wasn't a microwave situation available so you basically you really had to have some kind some kind of skill set you had to have an ear you did what i'm saying to be able to do this now not so much and you know it's not hating on nobody you know right you can't be mad at the kids for the error that they come up in and what technology is available to them you can't be True. mad at the stand yes, they can't. you did what i'm saying so it is what it is um that being said music is severely oversaturated <laughs> It's, it's oversaturated. I mean, the, the acting world is oversaturated. The same thing happened to the acting world. You know, Instagram wasn't available when Denzel Washington and Angela Bassett was coming up. You really had to go hone your skills and, you know, get yourself together to be able to do this thing. But now yeah. you don't have to do that. You get on Instagram and crack a couple jokes and make a <laughs> people laugh. You in a movie. Famous. Right. <laughs> Getting casted for movies and everything. So it's just, you know, it's a different it's a different time but again like i said you know you you can't be mad at you can't be mad at those folks because i'm pretty sure cats back before can you hear me i can hear you now there yeah um you know back before my time you know to to make a beat to make a song you know you had to call the fellas in you know you had to call in the band you know right our player the drum player everybody you had to call them in they had to sit there and get in sync with each other right <laughs> and put that thing together then on top of that you got to sing the lyrics live 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 on the spot look we ain't got much tape you messed this up that's it so that wasn't the case when i came up when i came up you know we had synthesizers and drum machines that that has metronome and you know <laughs> it keeps the beat for you you did yeah. what i'm I'm pretty sure cats from back that back in those days was looking at us like, oh, they they got the cheat code. <laughs> they ain't got to do what we had to do. Right. Yeah, like I said, you know, music is oversaturated, but at the same time, you can't be mad at nobody for for the hand they got dealt. Period. All facts on that. Oh, but it's all too control, so I can get, I 
have some favorite artists that you enjoy um an artist i listen to artists that i listen to a lot on the rap side is uh freddie gibbs and currency mm. nice i listen to those guys a lot um other than that mm, um mm, that's a good one <laughs> um, it's a little tough these days huh people though i listen to a lot of stuff but as far as like Anything close to a consistent base, I would say Freddie and uh, Currency. What about their music uh, speaks to you? Um, the soulfulness of it. Mm. I just like you know that's that's the vibe I like personally myself for my own personal preference. You know it. Mm. It has something to do with when I create, and sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with, with when I create. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's but that's the music I listen to just to like kick back and ride and enjoy myself i'm not thinking about oh i need to make something like this or i wonder what they're doing in the streets and that's what i like yeah <laughs> well I, when you create music how, how does your your passion really show up how, how does it reveal itself when you're in that studio or when you're creating the beat or when you're in production mode um it shows up all kinds of ways, honestly, man. Um, I, I really can't say because honestly, it's a case by case basis. Mm. In, mo in most cases, it never happens the same. Sometimes it's like this morning, for instance, this morning, I um, I woke up with this voice in my head. Mm. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up with this melody in my head, a voice singing the melody. So. Here go the technology. Watch this. So this is something I would not have been able to do back in the ADAT days. So thanks to technology, I was able to get up and come in here and sing on the mic the melody I heard in my head, auto-tune it and pitch correct it, pitch it up and do some other tricks to it, and I built the beat around it. Wow. It heard in my head and, um, man, it turned out dope. <laughs> that doesn't happen, that much, but it turned out dope. I love it. <laughs> hey, like you said, technology, right? Technology. So for someone coming up in the music industry, what's a piece of advice that you would give them for them to be successful? Um, Read. Do your due diligence on how things really work, for instance. Um, and the thing is, the information is out there. Now, this information isn't hidden away in some dark corner in the library that you got to climb a ladder to to get on yeah. the rocket ship to go find and nothing like that like it's out here you can research this stuff and look it up like you look up anything else right. understand what a record deal really is understand what a publishing deal really is before you embark on that journey i'm not telling you not to do it but just understand what it is you're getting into you did what i'm saying um in short a publishing deal and a record deal they are very high interest bank loans very high interest bank loans with crazy stipulations on top of the high interest that's a good way to put that 
You dig what I'm saying? So really like, you know, you in a situation where a label is reaching out to you. Hey, we want to, we want to, we want to, man, do your due diligence because a lot of artists, you know, they hurry up and sign these pub deals and these record deals, you know, because they, they looking for that money because life happens every day and life costs money. Um, they sign these deals and then years down the line, you know, they, they be upset about, oh, they did this with my publishing. Oh, I can't yeah. get my masters. You know, I can't use my name and my likeness without their permission. Oh, man. You know, all these things that are in the paperwork. You dig what I'm saying? So, yeah, do your due diligence. Honestly, I would say get it to where you can you can read and fully understand and comprehend a contract yourself outside of, you know, the attorney that you use. No, nope. I agree fully. That's good. Yeah, yeah. somebody need to hear that one because that's uh, that's huge uh, to actually know what your contract says and be clear on what you are willing to allow and not. Uh, a lot of people don't even think twice to really dig deep into it. They just are excited about the opportunity because they're, they're focused. They're focused on the money. You know, they're focused on the money, and that's what you know. That's what society teaches us at the end, of, at the beginning, middle, and end of the day. Hey, man. You need to get this money. We need you to be the biggest consumer you could possibly be. We got something for you, whether you're healthy or sick. Spend that money. Yeah. You know, that's the, you know, we're coerced <laughs> to uh, have that mentality or whatever. Um, yeah, man, you can make those, you can grab that red ink pen and make those markups with your attorney. Yeah, that's true. You know? Together. Make it clear. Make it plain. I like that. First hand experience. You know, I signed a pub deal back in 06 and I'm still suffering based on the lack of research i was focused on the money so you know like your boy jay said i did that so hopefully you won't have to go through that trust me don't do it <laughs> and if you if you do something you better like you said research and do your due diligence yeah uh, that, that that was really good so like i said somebody needed that that was absolutely good uh <laughs> solid yeah. solid information uh, this yeah. is a part of my talks where I like to do a little lightning round here of questions. So you're just going to give a word or a phrase to answer these questions. They'll be easy. So I'll give you a test one here. Uh, if I said, uh, I am from Cleveland, Ohio. All right. See, <laughs> easy, easy. Uh, let's see. I am living in my purpose when I'm when I'm creating mm. the artist I can sit and listen to when I need to unwind unwind mm. you know what watch this I don't listen to watch anything when I unwind it's, I listen to silence mm. nice nice so getting your namaste on I got you brother yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel most fulfilled when when I create something I actually like. That's nice. The biggest obstacle to my peace is. The biggest obstacle to my peace is. Man. um, Me being antisocial. Mm. I'm, I'm anti, especially in large settings. Uh huh. You know, when you're antisocial and you know, you just. You take you take a liking to just minding your business. Amazingly, some people take offense to that. <laughs> you know, that is true. And then you know you get the backlash. That's kind of a that's kind of a rough phrase to use, but for lack of a better term, when you get the backlash of that, you know, you find yourself like, ah, oh, man, it wasn't like that. And that and like, yeah, like man, relax. Nobody has any. <laughs> Because I'm quiet and I'm minding my business, don't mean I have anything against you. I literally have nothing to say. Like, <laughs> just mind your business. I got you. <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry about it. Trust me. Don't lose no sleep because I won't. That's it. Well, uh, let's see. What's the most difficult decisions you you've had to make to fulfill your purpose? Hmm. Difficult decisions I had to make to fulfill my purpose. Um. Not gonna lie to you, man. I, I can't. I can't. I honestly can't say that I've had to make any real difficult decisions. Um, well, there was one point where an artist I was working with, 
He was signed to a record label. Mm -hmm. um, him and our manager at the time, they were on tour. They got in a tour bus accident. Our manager got hurt real bad. I'm talking about almost Ooh. lost his life. He uh, The bus crashed. He flew out of a window. Uh, man, probably about the size of your average cabinet and flew nine feet. Ooh. You know, woke up in a puddle of blood, so on and so forth. Long story short, you know, his attorneys advised him to name everybody in the suit. So not only did he name the bus company because the driver didn't have his license, he wasn't supposed to be driving, but he also named the record labels that was involved that was involved as well. Ooh. So when it came down to it, um the artist, the record label was in contact with the artist, basically saying, you know, if you're gonna continue to work with him as your manager we're not going to be able to move forward with you as an artist. So we're all on the phone. And then, you know, the conversation turned to me he was like, you too, LT. They said, if, you know, if you continue to manage you, they're not going to mess with none of your beats. So honestly, I ain't going to front, man. It really wasn't a hard decision because I was like instant with it. Like, oh, well, they're not going to be messing with none of my beats. I'm not leaving my man high and dry. Yeah. So that was the closest to a difficult decision that I had to make, but it actually wasn't difficult. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, well, that's like good, it. man. I, yeah. I, I, I I appreciate somebody has that loyalty to a friend uh, and somebody that they care about. So, yeah, and that was the guy. That, I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't even been in the predicament if it wasn't for that guy. You did what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. Like, oh, that yeah. Easy. That was easy, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. Last one. If you could go back and tell you, if, go back in time and tell your younger self something, what would it be? Um, it's a lot of serious stuff, but one thing in particular that stands out: um, take that money from that pub deal and flip it. There you go. I like that. Triple, triple that, triple that, triple that money from that pub deal. Get them fools they money back, and keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. That's what I would have told my younger self on the music, on the music business side. Yeah. So anybody well, out there that still ends up doing a pub deal, I highly recommend. Wait, first of all, don't get in no trouble. But um, I highly recommend if you have a situation where you could take whatever money that that publishing situation is going to give you and you could triple it or quadruple it, I highly recommend you do that. Mm. Don't go buying no jewelry and no cars and no no gucci or whatever these cats is wearing and all that stuff don't don't go do none of that flip that money quadruple it or triple it give them their money back so you're recouped that's definitely what i would have did i got you well my man it's been great talking to you tell everybody where they can find you and what you're working on um you can find me on instagram just LTMO, LTMOE. I'm on there. I'm on, but not really on Clubhouse. I have a profile. I don't I don't do nothing on there. <laughs> um, what else? Um, that's it. Twitter, LTMO. Um, I have an instrumental album that I just did a light release on. Um, it's not on any other streaming platforms. Um, that's highway robbery. Um that's a whole nother conversation. Um, I'm on uh, Audius. That's uh, A-U-D-I-U-S. Mm -hmm. It's like the um, it's like the NFT version of SoundCloud. Gotcha. Um, the, the project's on there. It's under uh, Todd Moore, T-X-D-D-M-X-X-R-E. Um, go on there, check that out. It's an instrumental album, easy listening, you know, smooth jazz, like funk nice type of vibe or whatever um that's it man uh oh look out for uh i have a show called who made the beat that's coming mm. on too very 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 soon my man good stuff brother thank you for being on today and it was great talking to you man thank uh, you. i wish you a lot of great success out there man i appreciate it man you too as well thank you brother thank you brother look have a have a blessed day man and we'll talk soon okay yes sir you do the same all right. All right.